morning. Our order of worship this morning is Divine Service Setting 1 on page 151. Our opening hymn is number 868. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we have confessed our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. O sinners, Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro is printed in the board. For zeal for your house has consumed me. Deliver.
deliver me from sinking in the mire. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Let not the flood sweep over me or the deep swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For zeal for your house has consumed me, and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. This holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Testament reading for the third Sunday in Lent is from Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, and, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold you guiltless who take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock, or the, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. according to St. John, the second chapter. And the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. And so the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us that for doing these things? And Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. We make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God.
You may be seated. We sing him 824. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Our text is from the Gospel which was just read. Our text this morning takes place on Monday of Holy Week. Jesus has just entered the city on Palm Sunday. Welcome to Jerusalem with great enthusiasm and shouts of Hosanna to the son of David and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then Palm Sunday ends on a bit of an ominous note as the Gospel of Mark records that Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple and when he had looked around at everything as it was already late he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, Monday of Holy Week, Jesus will do a lot more than merely look around the temple grounds. For he was disgusted with what he saw there, and our Lord took significant action to write it. Jesus began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And quoting Isaiah chapter 56, Jesus says, My house 
shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. Jesus' actions here might seem a bit shocking to us, for that's not the way we're accustomed to seeing Jesus. It's definitely not the meek and the mild Jesus that we saw at Christmas. So what's happening in the text today? Well, each Passover festival, which was celebrated annually by the Jews in remembrance of God delivering them from slavery in Egypt, throngs of people would gather in Jerusalem. They would come to celebrate God's deliverance. And many of them came from far away. It was much easier for them to buy the animals that were needed for the sacrifices as close to the temple as possible. And so, rather than trying to bring the animals with them over long distances, the Jews came up with a matter of convenience for them. The priests just happened to have pre-approved animals for these travelers to purchase. And of course, these animals came at a premium price. And there were even reports of kickbacks to some of the priests and reports of priests rejecting animals that were purchased at places other than the official temple vendors. They were forcing the people to buy from certain salesmen. And travelers to Jerusalem also came with foreign currency And that had to be exchanged for the currency that was acceptable to pay the temple tax. And as you might expect, there were reports that the money changers charged exorbitant exchange fees. The focus of the Passover was no longer on God, prayer and sacrifice, but rather on the business of the temple at Passover time. That had become the point of emphasis for the Jews in Jerusalem. But there's something even more serious happening. Jesus quotes Isaiah saying that the temple was to be a house of prayer for all the nations. It was to be a house of prayer not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. And that's why the temple was constructed with a court for male Jews, a court for female Jews, and a court for Gentiles. And when the priests set up these uh, business places for the vendors, they moved them into the court of Gentiles and thus forcing out the Gentile nations. They would be unable to pray and worship at the temple. The temple meant to be a house of prayer for all nations was instead a money-making machine for the religious leaders and all who were involved in their greed. And that's why Jesus launches into significant action clearing the temple grounds in our text today. And that's the day of action of Jesus sends a message, a significant message, to you and me. Because we too can be tempted to turn the practice of the Christian faith into a means to line our pockets, to make our budget for the year. And it's easy for us to give budgets and offerings, incomes and expenses, a very high priority of what we're doing as a congregation, and we lose sight of the real reason that we are gathered here as a congregation. We are here to worship the Lord. We are here to hear of the Lord's deeds for us. We are here to have our sins forgiven to partake of Christ's body and blood. We are here to repent. 
now i'm not saying that we should shouldn't have a budget and we shouldn't have a plan and make financial projections we just have to make sure that we get our priorities straight budgets are here to serve the ministry not the other way around and the money changers and the vendors who sold animals for sacrifice placed a real obstacle in the place in place for the people especially the gentiles to worship god in fact they all but precluded gentiles from being able to pray and worship in the temple courts and society today places obstacles in our way too that get in our way of worshiping god as he wants to be worshiped some of them are self-inflicted obstacles some of them are placed in our path by others and some we place in the path of others jesus would like nothing more than to take action in overturning and driving these obstacles out of our lives also so that we might receive him through his good gifts of word and sacrament it was indeed a significant action that jesus took on monday of holy week yet even this would pale in comparison to the action he would take for you and for all people at the end of this week he would not drive out vendors and animals from the temple court instead he would drive sin death and the devil from their place of rule and dominance in the lives of the people and in so doing he drove out that which separates us from God, our sin. And all that Christ accomplished for you became yours on another wonderful day of action in your life. The day that your parents brought you to the front and you were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. On this day, the Holy Spirit, working through water in the word, called you to faith, washed away all your sin, claimed you as a child of God, and made you an heir of everlasting life. A day of action on God's part indeed. And then 13 or so years later, you would stand in front of this altar yourself and make the same confession that your sponsors made for you as you stood up and confirmed your faith in the Lord. Another day of action. As you might expect, the religious leaders of the day were not pleased with the action that Jesus took on Monday of Holy Week. It was not good for business. And the Gospel of Mark even records that the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to destroy Jesus. And by the end of Holy Week, they will think that they have done exactly that. For Jesus appeared to be dead. He did appear to be no longer a concern for them. They saw him die on the cross. They saw him placed in a tomb and they saw the guard of Pilate surrounding the tomb so that nothing would happen. They also saw that the grave could not hold Jesus, and yet they refused to believe. Jesus takes his most significant action for us on that Friday and then again on that Sunday as he rises from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. And with that resurrection, he promises you that you too will live forever with him in heaven. A day of action, a day of surprising action for Jesus, but a day of action which brings about our salvation. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.
we rise and sing the offer. prayers this morning. We remember Ralph Cable, who is now at home recovering, and who has been diagnosed with some cancer. And also uh, Butch Hunt, who is on hospice. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, Look with favor upon your servants who are ill. Assure them of your mercy. Deliver them from the temptations of the evil one. And give them patience and comfort in their illness. If it please you, restore them to health or give them grace to accept this tribulation with courage and hope. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. And O God, our Heavenly Father, you did so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We give thanks to you for his holy life on earth, for his precious sufferings and death, and for his glorious victory over sin and evil. And we beseech you to grant us a lively faith in him and a portion of the life which he has obtained for us. We pray for your holy church throughout the world, and especially for the churches united to us in sacred communion and life. We pray for the ministers of your word and sacraments, for the president of our synod and districts, and especially for our own pastors and teachers. We pray for the rulers of our state and nation, for our judges and magistrates, beseeching you that all these in their several callings may serve truly and faithfully to your glory and to the good government of your people, remembering always the strict and solemn account they must give before the judgment seat of Christ. We pray for ourselves that in your mercy these holy days may bring anew to our hearts all that our Lord has done for us and for our eternal salvation. We mourn our sinfulness and seek your forgiveness and grace. Grant that we may ever rejoice in your love and find strength for life's way so that we may faithfully carry whatever your cro our cross and steadfastly walk the way set before us with thankfulness and joy, and at last taste the peace of our Lord's victory and the rest which he has prepared for all who love him. And all these things we humbly pray in the name of him who humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
us pray. O oh, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Our closing hymn is number 427. A quick announcements. The Capella Choir from Concordia University, Chicago, formerly River Forest, uh, is here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock uh, for their concert. Uh, they are asking that everyone wear a mask uh, if you're attending. But they've got some great music, and we hope to see everyone here for that. Also, uh, there are sign-up sheets in the back for Easter lilies on this side and for signing up for desserts for next week's uh, chicken and fish dinner for, from UCLS over on this side. So if, if you're able to do one or either of those things, please sign up today. Um, there's the fireman's breakfast still going on till noon, so if you haven't eaten yet, or even if you have, go on down and have some pancakes and eggs and whatever. Have a blessed week. We hope to see everyone Wednesday evening at our midweek Lent service and next Sunday.